Hey guys, and welcome to my channel, Shell of a Shop Boutique. My name is Sam, and a little bit about me is that I am a small town farm girl who is a lover of farmhouse and getting dirty, but also loving the glitzier side of things as well. And my channel is gonna be all about doing those fun projects to add to your home decor, to make gifts, pretty much anything under the sun that I can come up with, you guys will get to see. So for my very first project, what I am going to do is repurpose an old drawer that came from the bar in our basement. And it was just too cool to give up and I made my husband keep it, even though I didn't know exactly what I was gonna do with it for a while. I begged and pleaded and he let it sit there for a couple months, but it was fine because the finished product is so cool and I hope you guys love it. Now, before we get started, please be sure to give a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe if you wanna follow along for more DIY craft projects. So to kick off this craft, I am removing the handles from my drawer and I put the screws on the handle poles in a Ziploc baggie so I didn't lose them. If you don't like your handles, you can check out Hobby Lobby. They have a bunch of really cool ones. So you can either use the original ones or find some new ones that you like better. From there, I just took a sanding block and gave everything a good sanding and wiped down before I started painting. Now I am using Auntie Tay chalked up paint in the color Sea Glass, and this is one of her new Homeline colors. I'm absolutely obsessed with this color. I love it, and I'm a lover of the chalked up paint. It has a matte finish. It dries super hard onto your project, so it's not flaking off. Um, you're not gonna wanna wear clothes that you like because it's permanent. Now you may have noticed that I started out using a foam brush and that is what I normally prefer when I use chalked up paint, but the sides of this drawer were really porous and it kept snagging, so I just used a regular paint brush. After that, just give it a couple of coats of paint or leave it a little bit more rustic. Then I hopped over to my Cricut to use this Anti-Tay Members SVG and cut it out on the Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl that you can also get along with the paint from shopantitay.com. Now you'll cut this like regular vinyl. I use it on the stencil vinyl setting, but when you weed it, you're going to weed out the part that you normally keep and keep the part that you normally get rid of. Um, it's like the positive negative stuff anyways just watch and see what I'm doing if you need reference. Oh, that was so oddly satisfying. Okay, now we are going to take the masking paper transfer tape, also from shopantitay.com, and I like to do it when it's still on the mat, just so I can help prevent bubbles, but it, you don't always have to do it this way. One of the finicky things about the stencil vinyl is when it does get bubbles, it can be kind of a pain to get it out. So keeping everything flat as possible when transferring is going to be a game changer when it comes to doing your actual stencil. Give it a good rub down and then I like to flip it over to pull it up again to prevent bubbles and then rub it down really, really good again before you transfer it. Now onto the fun part. I cut it a little bit more to fit the drawer and I pull up the backing, pull off the masking tape very slowly and rub out and push out any of the bubbles. Then I give it another coat of the sea glass, a very, very thin coat dabbing up and down using a foam brush. For the color of the words, I am using galvanized. And once again, I am still using really thin coats 
and dabbing up and down. It's better to do multiple coats than one thick coat because if you do a thick coat, it will bleed no matter what you do. After I let it dry, then I like to pick off the small parts first and pull off the front. Once that is completely 100% dry, I use this matte varnish by Plaid Crafts. It's sold exclusively at Walmart, I found out, but that's where I got it, was at Walmart. And I did give it one coat of sealant. It's an indoor-outdoor water-based varnish that dries completely clear because I just wasn't sure how well the chalked up paint would hold up being constantly wet since it was in a flower box. So I just wanted to take that extra precaution, but I think I'll hold up great. Now we are getting so close. Look how good that turned out. I absolutely love it, but it's not finished. We need to add those handles back. These I did not touch. They're rusty. I love it. I hope they stay rusty. I hope the rust runs down on the box. But to aid in not deteriorating the box, I drilled holes in the bottom for drainage for the flowers I'm going to put in it. I just drilled the holes front and back to make sure it drained really well. Added some miracle Grow potting mix and added, these are irises. We don't really have many other flowers right now and I'm transplanting these later and I thought they just look so cute for now. Later on, I'll post updates on my Instagram of other flowers I put in there throughout the year because I live in Michigan. This is what we got. Now, if you want these awesome products, be sure to check out shopantitay.com and use my code Shell of a Shop Boutique for 10% off or you can become a member at antitay.com and get thousands of SVGs and 20% off shopantitay.com. Okay, and now for the big reveal. So what do you guys think? I am absolutely thrilled with how it came out. If you try it out for yourself, make sure to tag me on Instagram or TikTok so I can see your creations too. And if you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching guys. I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.